Hi, good morning, everyone. This is meteorologist Melanie Layden, and it is 11 o'clock here on Monday, and it's time for our weather school for kids. We do this every day, Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock, and someone from the Forewarned Storm team hops on here to Facebook Live, and we give you a weather lesson for the day. And we've done all kinds of cool lessons over the past couple of weeks uh, since all the coronavirus pandemic has a lot of kids out of school. Something for, you know, fun, something fun for kids and parents, really of all ages, to get involved with. So uh, today's lesson is actually on weather instruments. And it's one thing we haven't talked about yet. We talked about a few of them individually. Uh, last week, Cody Murphy did one on rain gauges. And today we're going to talk about all the different good old-fashioned tools that we use to determine the weather. So we'll get into that here in a minute. But uh, just to let you know, we've done these in the past, and you can hop on to our website or our News 4 app, and you can check out all the ones that we've done in the past. We've done really cool ones about hurricanes, wind speeds, fog, rainbows, all kinds of neat ones that you and your kids uh, could get involved and take a look at. So today we're starting off Weather School for Kids, and we'll get started on weather instruments. All right, so again, we do this every Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock right here on the WSMV Facebook page. So thank you so much for tuning in today. All right, weather instruments. This is what we use to just determine what kind of weather we're seeing out there. And it can be anything from the temperature to rain to air pressure to even satellites up in the sky. And we, of course, you know, have all kinds of computer models that have really advanced our way of getting weather data and uh, weather information, but you know, a lot of times we have to rely on the good old fashioned tools that we've had over the years to get accurate data. And so to a degree, we still use these a lot. And a lot of these you probably even have around your house as well. So we'll get into it here. The first one is a thermometer. And I know you've all seen one of these before. This is probably the most popular of all the weather tools out there. And the thermometer measures the air temperature. And uh, you can see there, this one looks like it's right about, oh, 65 degrees or so. And a lot of thermometers measure the temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Of course, we use Fahrenheit here in America, but all over the rest of the world, every other country uses Celsius, what you see over there on your left. And over on the right is Fahrenheit. So uh, actually the freezing point, which you can see right there, it's pointing, our freezing point here in the United States is 32 degrees, but everywhere else you go in the world, the freezing point is zero degrees Celsius. So when I was actually in weather school, when I was getting my meteorology degree, I had to learn everything in Celsius. So it was kind of hard getting used to that, getting used to converting the temperatures from Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa. So a lot of uh, your thermometers will give you both temperature readings. Some of them just do Fahrenheit since we use the most, but most thermometers are closed glass tubes. That's what this one is right here. Sometimes they're plastic and it's got mercury in it. And that's, um, it's a liquid that's uh, alcohol and mercury mixed together. And that's what's used to measure that air that's out in the air around us. When the air around the tube heats the liquid, that liquid expands and it moves up. And that's what causes that rising temperature. And then a scale then shows us what the actual temperature is. And that's the scale you see right there. So you probably have a thermometer at your house. If not, you probably have one in your classroom that you've probably seen your teachers have before, but probably our most popular of the weather tools out there. This one's one of my favorites. I still love these. This is a good old fashioned barometer and a barometer measures our air pressure. And I know these numbers might look a little crazy to you, but we use this every single day in meteorology as meteorologists and we measure what the air pressure is like. And uh, what a barometer does, it tells you whether or not that air pressure is rising or falling. So a lot of modern day barometers will actually have little weather icons on here. And what it means when you have a rising barometer, that means your air is going to be dry and sunny. That means we're going to have a lot of sunshine out there. So if our air pressure is something like 1,050, that means it's going to be a nice sunny day. But when it falls into, say, the 900s over here, that's when we know we're going to have some rain in the forecast. So a falling barometer means it's going to be stormy, wet conditions. And this is actually probably, arguably, one of the most greatest inventions, I think, in, in weather technology. Uh, the barometer was actually invented 
so long ago, I think it was the 1600s by an Italian scientist. And barometers are really cool because you can actually find a lot of neat antique ones. Um, you may even have your grandparents that have one of these on the wall. And it usually has a barometer on the bottom and then a long thermometer up top. And people hang these on the wall and they actually become really neat decorations for your home. So a barometer is something that's really cool and it measures what the air pressure is going to be like and that's how we know if it's going to be sunny cloudy rainy outside so this is a really cool tool we actually use this all the time in our weather maps as well here's a rain gauge so last week cody murphy did a whole segment on these and these are really cool because a lot of people all around tennessee and kentucky they still have these in their backyard and a rain gauge is great you know the national weather service uses these all the time to determine how much rain has fallen over a specific time period in a certain area so you can see here this rain gauge is measuring about an inch and a half, little over an inch and a half of rain there so you've got your millimeters and your inches on there typically, and that's how we determine how much rain has fallen in a certain area. And these are really fun to have in your backyards uh, for not just kids, but adults too. It's neat to just see how much rain has fallen in your yard, especially if you are a farmer, have anyone in your family in agriculture. Uh, it's really fun for kids just to get involved with, just to you know see what the weather is doing outside. If you're a gardener, these are fun too. So if you wanna go and check it out uh, after this is over, Cody Murphy did one on Friday all about rain gauges and he showed his too. It's pretty cool. All right, take a look at this. I love these, but I hardly ever see them anymore. This is a wind vane. W-I-N-D-V-A-N-E, a wind vane. Uh, this is an instrument that determines the direction from which the wind is blowing. So you typically see these um, on top of barns. I see a lot of these kind of in farm life. And these are have really become just really neat decorations on top of houses nowadays. It's kind of just more of a a cute thing to put on top of your roof but these were actually used all the time back in the day to determine where the wind was blowing and you got your north south east and west on there and a lot of times they're usually topped off with a cute little farm animal this one has a rooster but i've seen a lot of ones that have horses on them too and these are really cool because people still use them nowadays not just to determine the wind uh, but also just as a fun decoration We've got a lot of wind tools out there. This is a cool one too. This is called an anemometer and this measures our wind speed. And I really don't see a whole lot of these anymore, but these are still really cool because all these little cups here, you've probably seen these on top of industrial buildings. That's where I see them the most now, I think. And these are three, you typically come in threes and they're kind of like cups. And what they do is they actually catch the wind and they spin around really fast if the wind's going in a fast direction. And it actually, when it's turning is turning a dial that's attached to it and that dial will show you the wind speed so those are pretty cool it's called an anemometer and then we also have these that you may have seen before too these are typically found out at airports but this is a wind sock and it does the same kind of thing it just measures the direction and the speed of your wind so you can see this one is sticking straight out this one is showing that the wind is blowing pretty fast of wherever this is so a wind sock is typically found um usually it are usually around places that have to do a lot with travel. So I know I see these a lot at airports. Um, you probably will see these at a FedEx or UPS location. They have these quite often. And I've even seen these before on the side of the highway or the interstate. Not so much here in Tennessee, but if you ever travel to a very windy location, a lot of times these will be on the side of the road to kind of give you a heads up as a driver to know, hey, the wind's blowing pretty fast keep both hands on the wheel. So wind socks are pretty cool and they're actually still pretty common. All right, this is one that I know very well because we as meteorologists use this every single day. This is what a typical weather map looks like. And our weather maps indicate just what the atmosphere is doing. Um, it, ind it indicates atmospheric conditions above a large portion of the earth. So this one's actually taking a picture of the whole United States, but we take a look here and we actually can zoom in to each area. We can zoom in closer toward the Nashville area. That's what we typically take a look at here as meteorologists. But what you see on here, all these lines, they're typically what we use to measure the air pressure and the temperature. 
Um, take a look there. We got isobars and isotherms. And the isobar measures the air pressure, and an isotherm measures the temperatures. And then, of course, you've got all your fronts on there. You got low pressure, high pressure, things like that. And um, that's when, when cold fronts or warm fronts are moving in. So we use weather maps every single day when we forecast the weather. All right, take a look at this. This is a weather satellite. And yeah, we use these a lot. Well, I guess the National Weather Service uses these more than anything, but we get our data from, from these. And these are really cool. And you can see this as it's taking a photograph and it's tracking large scale air movements. And these kind of float around just above the earth and NASA and NOAA typically manage these, but these are really cool to see. And um, meteorologists actually compile and analyze all that data with the help of computers, of course. And that's how we get a lot of our weather information too from these cool weather satellites. Um, here's the cool one. This is one that you probably use if your kids are involved in Oh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, things like that. This is a good old fashioned compass and I really hardly ever see these anymore. But if you are an avid camper or hiker, things like that, people still use these. We have them on our phones now as well, if you have an iPhone. And uh, this just measures the direction of where you're going. It's a navigational instrument. And we use these a lot on maps, of course, to show north, south, east and west, things like that. And the best tool of all to measure the weather are your eyes. That's going to help us detect the weather if we're outside. You always want to just keep an eye to the sky, and uh, you'll usually be on top of weather conditions then. So we actually take a look outside the weather all the time. Every morning before I come into work, I just take a look up and see what it's looking like. If it's sunny or cloudy, and you just kind of uh, feel, what, feel what the weather is looking like. So... Hope you learned something new today and uh, we use these instruments a lot but of course you know we have the help of computer models now too to help us out with measuring all kinds of weather that we have out there but i hope you learned something new and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section and we'll get back to you and of course you can go back and check all of our other segments that we've done on weather school for kids that's going to be on wsmb.com and our news for app thanks so much for tuning in hope you have a great day and tune in at news for at noon i'll be on with the latest weather conditions what's going on today and for the rest of the week with our changing temperatures and when rain makes a return to the forecast. Hope you can tune in then. Have a great day everyone.